اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم جزاکم اللہ خیرن السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکات انہا للہ نحمده ونستعین ونستغفر ونشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ واشہد ان محمد عبده ورسوله My beloved brothers and sisters السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکات Alhamdulillah, we are honored tonight to have with us our dear uh, Sheikh, Dr. Rafiq Muhammad, uh, who will talk to us a little bit about forgiveness. Um, and we are aware and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us where we are in a state of committing sins. And this is by our nature. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had mentioned, uh, as narrated by Anas, that all sons of Adam are sinners, but the best of sinners are those who repent and repent often, as related in uh, Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah. So this concept of sinning and forgiveness is something that is innate in us where we need to make sure that we are repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking his forgiveness. And what better month than Ramadan to train ourselves with the act of seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As human beings, as sinners, we know that the only way that we are going to be entered into paradise is from the mercy and rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he gives us or uh, uh, forgives us for our sins. That is the only way by which we will be entering uh, Jannah. And so this, again, the concept of forgiveness is a critical, uh, important thing for us to be aware of and understand the means by which we seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I mentioned tonight, uh, we're honored to have with us uh, Sheikh Dr. Rafiq Muhammad, who is the principal of al Ahsan Academy and also a graduate of Umm Al-Qura University in Mecca and a friend of us at Masjid al-Siddiq and everybody in the community knows him. And so without further ado, I'd invite Sheikh Rafiq to address us. Sheikh Rafiq. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You can't hear? You said you can't hear, I am? No. Um, one second. Okay, go ahead. You can hear now? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa la Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in ridwanullahi alayhim ila yawmiddin. Amma ba'd. Brothers and sisters, we are in the blessed month of Ramadan. And this month, we are being told that it is the month of forgiveness, a month in which we all seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The concept of forgiveness, maghfiram, it's so much being talked about in the Quran and the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As you heard earlier, we all make mistakes. Kullu bani adam khatta wa khayral khattain at-tawwabun. Every son of Adam makes mistakes. Every one of us. And the best of those who make mistakes are the ones who turn to Allah and they seek forgiveness for their mistakes. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us that the pen is lifted on three categories of people. Rufi al-Qalamu and Thalath. So among them, little children, they're not responsible. And the one who is insane, 
is not responsible. But everyone who is an adult, who is of a sane mind, whenever he makes, he or she makes mistakes, that person is responsible. So it is said to err is human and to forgive is divine. We want to look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness of everything that we have done wrong. And at no time should we think that our sins, our mistakes are of such a magnitude that we will not be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, Qul ya ibadi alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah inna Allah yaghfiru al-dhunuba jami'a innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Say, O oh my servants, those who have transgressed against their own souls, despair not of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Verily, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. And so at no time should be think that we have made so many mistakes that there is no room for forgiveness. There is always room for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, among his attributes, he is al-ghafur. He is the most forgiving. He is a tawwab, the acceptor of repentance. He is a rahman ar rahim he is the most merciful, the compassionate one. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Al-Quran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْدُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْعَرْدُ عُئِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاذِمِينَ الْغَيْثِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاهِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran and be quick, make haste with regards to the forgiveness of your Lord. And with regards to Jannah, paradise, the width of it is the heavens and the earth. And it is for those who are righteous, those who are pious. And who are these people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are the ones who spend in ease and in adversity. They are the ones who control their anger. They are forgiving to others, those who have done them wrong. And the, they are the ones who do good. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and these people, the muttaqun, if they have committed any evil or they have wronged themselves, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they seek his forgiveness for the sins that they have committed. They ask the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the righteous ones. They always turn to Allah and they seek forgiveness when they feel that they have made mistakes or they have committed any wrong against people or committed wrong against them themselves. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, when we look at forgiveness, it is of twofold. 
Allah's forgiveness in human forgiveness. Allah's forgiveness, if we have done wrong in relations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human forgiveness, if we have done wrong in relations to one another, to each other. So let us look at Allah's forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us opportunities. He, he gives us different pathways to seek his forgiveness. And so since we are in the month of Ramadan, let's mention some of the pathways that Allah has given us to seek his forgiveness or to gain his forgiveness. In our fasting, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sama Ramadana imanun wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. He who fasts Ramadan with faith, with iman, and with the expectation of reward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him his previous sins. So this is a way in which we can have forgiveness for our sins by fasting during the month of Ramadan. We are encouraged to stand at night, pray to Allah, make dua, do dhikr, recite Quran, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that this is also a way for us to have forgiveness for our sins. He says, Man qama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. He who stands, observe Ramadan the way it was observed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by his companions. That is that we spend time at night, during the day, at different periods. We spend time, especially at night, praying, making dua, making dhikr, reciting Quran, with iman, with faith, and with expectation of reward from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us our previous sins. That's another way of us being forgiven for our sins. And then when we look again at Ramadan, we are expecting a night that is better than 1,000 months, Laylatul Qadr. And it is the night that everyone, sincere Muslims, even those who may not have been as diligent during the month of Ramadan in the other days and other nights, they look for this night because they know of its reward, its blessing. And here Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man qama laylat al-qad imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi he who stands the night or observes the night of Qadr, this night that is better than 1,000 months, with Iman, with faith, and with expectation of reward, he will have his previous sins forgiven. And yet again, even, even what we give in terms of charity, in the month of Ramadan, for example, when we help people to break their fast, it is not only that we get rewards similar to the, the, the one who is fasting, but we also get forgiveness for our sins. So that's another way. Even by feeding people, by providing iftar for them, we are, given, we are told that we are having forgiveness for our sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this forgiving Rabb, our forgiving Lord, He gives us so many different pathways or different ways in which we can seek forgiveness for our sins. And I limited it to Ramadan because we are in the month of Ramadan. And even in the, in the month of Ramadan, we are being taught that beautiful dua 
that we should recite as we seek the 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 night of qadr the night of power that we should recite this dua allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni o allah you are the forgiving one you love to forgive so forgive me and uh, and we repeat this night after night in the last 10 nights as we search for the night of qadr my dear brothers and my dear sisters so when it comes to forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have so many opportunities to seek the forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us not lose sight of it but what about human forgiveness we do commit wrong with regards to one another and so we need to make sure that we look to forgive one another if we don't forgive one another then how do we expect to have forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as example we need to look at the life of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he conquered Mecca. He was that powerful individual. And so many were standing in front of him, having done him wrong, having fought against him, having done so much injustice to him and his companions, and they were wondering, this man who is so powerful at this time, what would he do to us? And they even asked the question. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to them, go for you are free. He did as Yusuf Alaihi Salam said to his brothers took the blame away from them and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forgive them even though they had done so much injustice to him and when she accepted islam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also forgive her even though she had his uncle his dear uncle hamza may allah be pleased with him martyred in the battle so this was muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a forgiving individual when he went to taif and he was ill-treated he was stoned he was humiliated he came out of the city and he sat under that tree and the angel came to him and said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with the people of taif give the command and we will destroy them and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said oh allah guide these people because they did not know what they were doing this was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hoping that out of them will come those who will continue to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. There, there is a beautiful story in the Quran with regards to Abu Bakr as Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him. It is said, that at the time when Aisha radiallahu anha was slandered and accused by the hypocrites or some of the hypocrites of Medina, 
they were trying to destroy or throw dirt on her noble character. A cousin of Abu Bakr by the name of Mr. joined with them. This cousin, he was financially supported by Abu Bakr. And so when he joined with them, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, took an oath that he would not support him anymore financially. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, let not those of virtue among you and wealth swear not to give to their relatives and the needy and the emigrants for the cause of Allah and let them pardon and overlook who do not like that Allah should forgive you and Allah is forgiving and merciful. When Abu Bakr radiallahu an who heard this, he said, yes, indeed, I do want Allah's forgiveness. What did he do? He continued to support Mr. Forgive him and continue to support him. And some said that he even increased the allowance that he was giving to Mr. That was how the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they looked at forgiveness. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even though he was promised by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that whatever mistakes he has made in the past and what he would make in the future, that he has been forgiven for it, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam still used to turn to Allah and to seek forgiveness. And it is said he used to repent. In one tradition, one narration, 70 times daily. And in another narration, 100 times daily. This was our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, when we forgive, we take a burden from our shoulders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Qawlun ma'arufun wa maghfira khayrun min sadaqa yatba'uha adhan wallahu ghaniyun halim. Kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity followed by injury and Allah is free of need and forbearing. Medical science has proven that when you pardon people that you have a healthy and strong body that you have peace of mind. Another benefit of forgiving others is that it helps us to be saved from fitna and afflictions. And so it's important that we do not only look for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we also look to forgive those who have wronged us and we strive to make sure that we pardon one another you know allah says of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the quran law kunta fadhan ghaliz al qalb 
lanfaddu min hawlik. If you were hard-hearted, if there were harsh, if, if there was harshness from your part, they would have run away from you. But instead, because the Prophet was soft-hearted and because he was kind, people gravitated towards him. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because you were not hard-hearted and because you were not harsh, they did not run away from you. So pardon them and seek their pardon. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to also pardon them. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it is important that in our everyday lives, yes, we seek the forgiveness of Allah, but we also look at how we can forgive our brothers and sisters who have in some way wronged us or we think that they have wronged us. There are so many families today living in this state where they have hate for one another. They're not willing to forgive each other. There are so many families today who are disunited, far apart from each other, just because they don't want to forgive each other. We can't continue to exist like this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, be kind unto those on earth and kindness would be, would be shown to you by the one who is in the heavens and forgive others and you will be forgiven. This is what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us. And so if we want to be forgiven by Allah, we need to be forgiving to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quite often, we tell people, you know, sometimes leaders think that they are not in this category. They don't need to ask for forgiveness from others. We may have say, said something, we may have done something, that has hurt other people. And so we should be the first to ask for forgiveness. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, as we spend the remainder of this month of Ramadan, just by email or by text or something, say to people, if I have done you wrong, please forgive me. And if you have, if people have done you wrong, say to them that you have forgiven them. This will bring some peace of mind. It will make our bodies healthy and strong. It will give us that comfort and that happiness and joy. And that's what we want in life. We want to live life in such a way that we are pleased with ourselves and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us safe. May he protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us rewards, tremendous rewards during this blessed month of Ramadan for all our good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-mu'min al-mu'minat min kulli dham fa astaghfirun innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. I say this to you, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, and I ask Allah for my forgiveness and for your forgiveness. And I turn to him sincerely in repentance. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. Jazakumullah khairan. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, Sheikh Rafiq. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to bless and guide you 
and grant you the strength and energy to continue to serve the community. Uh, we've taken so much from what our dear Sheikh has uh, uh, shared with us tonight in terms of turning to Allah sincerely and seeking his forgiveness. And that is one aspect of forgiveness as we approach the last 10 nights of Ramadan and we seek Laylatul Qad and we uh, fast and we spend the night in prayer, we seek that night where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, might, might forgive us uh, in terms of our dua that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma inni afuun kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afuanni. Also, let us spend these days, these precious days of Ramadan and think about and reach out to those that we may have done some wrong and ask others to for, forgive. And if we, as Sheikh Rafiq mentioned, if we may have been wronged, let us uh, be uh, proactive also and forgive others. And this is part of our way of seeking the, the benefits of Ramadan and the blessings from Ramadan and inshallah forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank you all for joining tonight and uh, pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts uh, this effort from us but also thank, uh, accept your time and uh, attentiveness here tonight uh, so that we may all benefit from this. Jazakumullah khairan. And we close with the dua. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Wa nastaghfiruka. Wa natubu ilai. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.